A paradox in fur. A playful creature wrapped in the densest coat on Earth. A million hairs per square inch. Bobbing in the cold Pacific swell, it charms the eye with endless play. But beneath this exterior lies a furnace, a metabolic engine burning at a furious rate. This appetite is not a quirk. It is a force of creation, the chisel that sculpts the world beneath the waves. Now, we open the field logs to document the truths of this living world. We are in the coastal waters of the North Pacific, among towering cathedrals of giant kelp. This is the realm of the sea otter, Anhydra lutris. We find a male floating effortlessly on his back. He grooms his two-layered pelt, not for vanity, but for survival. For unlike other marine mammals, he carries no insulating blubber. His fur is his only armor against the chill. This single biological fact dictates his entire existence and shapes the destiny of the ecosystem around him. To keep a core body temperature near 100 degrees Fahrenheit in this cold sea, his metabolism runs nearly three times that of a land mammal his size. He is locked in a constant race against heat loss, and the only way to win is to consume relentlessly. Every day, he must devour up to a quarter of his own body weight in seafood. For the sea otter, life is an unbroken chain of foraging, hunting, and feeding. His gaze is not idle curiosity. It is sharp, calculating. The look of a creature on a perpetual quest for calories. He dives, a streamlined corkscrew of energy vanishing into the emerald gloom of the kelp forest below. And this descent is not just a search for a meal. It is the first act in a drama that extends far beyond a single animal's hunger. Every motion sends ripples through this aquatic world. For here, he is not just a resident. He is its principal architect. Down in the dappled light of the kelp forest floor, his sensitive paws and whiskers probe the rocky crevices. They are exquisitely adapted instruments, detecting the slightest texture or movement in this dim underwater world. He is not a selective eater. Crabs, abalone, clams, snails, all are on the menu. But one prey item carries the most profound consequences. He locates his target, a purple sea urchin, strong elocentrotus, Purpuratus. Its spine's a clear warning to most predators. But the otter is a specialist. He snatches it from the rock with surprising dexterity. With another deft movement, he retrieves a smooth, flat stone, a familiar tool he may have stashed nearby. Tucking both treasures into the loose fold of skin beneath his armpit, a natural utility pocket, he kicks upward. A buoyant streak of fur rising back to the world of air and light. Here, at the surface, we witness one of the most remarkable examples of tool use in the marine world. Floating on his back, he places the stone on his chest, creating a makeshift anvil. With practiced, forceful blows, he smashes the urchin open. The sharp crack echoes across the water the sound of a biological lock being picked, a furnace being fed. He meticulously scoops out the rich orange roe, the gonads packed with lipids and protein, and consumes them with single-minded focus. For the otter, it is just one of many meals before sunset. But for the kelp forest, it is a profound intervention, a daily reprieve from an existential threat. To grasp the gravity of this meal, we must see what happens in the otter's absence. 
Where otters were hunted to extinction for their pelts, the seafloor tells a different story. Sea urchins, released from control, explode in number. No longer timid, they surge across the ocean floor in vast, slow-moving fronts. An army of mouths, devouring not the leafy fronds of the giant kelp, but the critical anchor that holds it fast, the holdfast. Once the holdfast is severed, the kelp, which can grow two feet a day and form a canopy stretching for hundreds of feet, is torn loose and swept away. The result is an urchin barren, a desolate seafloor stripped of its forest, reduced to a flat purple carpet of spines. The immense three-dimensional structure is gone. The kelp surf perch and olive rockfish that once sheltered their young vanish. The invertebrates clinging to the stalks, the crustaceans hiding in the holdfasts, gone. The entire ecosystem collapses into a monoculture of devastation. This is the trophic cascade. When removing a single predator at the top, triggers a chain reaction all the way down. The sea otter is what ecologists call a keystone species. Like the central stone in a Roman arch, its presence holds the entire structure together. Remove it, and the beautiful architecture of the kelp forest falls apart. Our otter, having finished his meal, discards the broken shell and his stone tool. He rolls in the water, forcing air deep into his fur, grooming to stay insulated. Even this playful motion burns precious calories. His hunt is far from over. He will dive again and again, repeating the cycle throughout the day. Each urchin he removes is more than food. It is a weed pulled from the forest, a guard post manned, a vote for biodiversity, for complexity, for the towering kelp canopy and the rich world it supports. This constant, appetite-driven work is the most important job in this community. The otter is the indispensable engineer. And the currency of his work is the relentless hunt for his next meal. The otter's influence radiates outward from its dining spot on the waves, shaping the lives of hundreds of species. With urchins held in balance, the kelp forest flourishes a vibrant, bustling marine metropolis. Its sunlit canopy forms a three-dimensional nursery for juvenile rockfish and lingcod, shielding them in their most vulnerable stage. Harbor seals and sea lions glide through its amber corridors, hunting the fish that thrive here. Shorebirds and gulls forage above, feeding on the invertebrates clinging to floating fronds. It is a world of staggering biodiversity, a web of interlocking lives, with the sea otter as its linchpin. Its hunger is the engine of this diversity. But the otter's legacy extends far beyond the forest itself, into the chemistry of our atmosphere. Giant kelp is a photosynthetic powerhouse, one of the fastest growing organisms on Earth. Like the great terrestrial forests, these underwater groves absorb vast amounts of carbon dioxide. A healthy kelp forest, protected by otters, can absorb up to 12 times more carbon than an urchin barren. When old fronds break away, much of that captured carbon sinks to the deep sea, where it can remain locked away for centuries. So when we watch the otter hunt, we are also witnessing a crucial act in the global carbon cycle. This small, playful mammal becomes an unwitting but powerful climate ally. Its relentless appetite not only builds a resilient ecosystem, it helps stabilize the very planet we depend on. The story of the sea otter is a profound lesson in connection. It shows how the fate of an entire ecosystem and even the makeup of our atmosphere can hinge on the metabolic demands of a single species. The most powerful forces in nature 
are often the most subtle. The quiet pressure of an appetite, the diligence of a hunt, this intricate balance is no accident. It is a masterpiece of evolution, engineered one meal at a time. Within this living codex, every creature has a role to play. Even the playful otter forges the health of our world in the crucible of its own survival. <laughs>